Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. Today we'll start looking a little bit closer into what our systems think of time, something that experts most accurately describe as a big ball of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. I know, I know, you thought you were done with the structs, Dad, yet here we are again. So let's look at it. We have at least three time-related fields. The file is A-time, M-time and C-time with the a-time representing the time of last access. Well, data access, really. Recall our visualization of the data structures representing a file. Accessing the data blocks pointed to from the inode and the vnode structure is what we're talking about here. Then there's the time of last modification. Again, data modification. And the time of last file status change, the c-time. This represents a change in the struct stat itself, more or less. All three of these commands can be displayed using the ls command, as I'm sure you know by now. So, a trivial example. By default, ls uses the file's mtime when displaying or sorting by date. If you specify the u flag, you get the a-time. In this example, the a-time for all these files is identical because I recently recreated the apu code tarball. Archiving the files requires reading them, so no surprise, all files have their A time updated. To display the time of last inode change, we use dash C. Let's take a look at how the timestamps change when we perform common operations. We create a new file and use stat to display the file times. This file system in use here supports an inode birth time, so we display that too. Note that all four times shown here are identical. This should make sense, since creating the file implies access and modification of the file data, as well as modification of the new file's inode data. If we then cat the file, we read it, meaning we are accessing the file data blocks, and the A time gets updated. If we append to the file, we are obviously writing data to the file, so the M time is updated. We are extending the file in size, so at the very least the ST size field of the inode changes, so a C time is updated as well. Now, those operations seem straightforward. Let's look at what happens when we change something about the file. Creating a second hard link to the file increments the ST ending field, so necessarily requires an update of the C time. But since we don't do anything to the data, the A time and M time remain unchanged. Similarly, changing permissions only modify the ST mode, and again the C time is updated, but the A time and M time remain the same. Changing file ownership follows along the same lines with the same result. Okay, now we have a file that's owned by Fred with no write permissions for anybody but the owner. The touch command by default touches the file's A time and M time. But not surprisingly, you can modify these members of the struct stat or threads file without write permissions. But if you do have read and write permissions, you can change those timestamps. That makes sense, since if you have read permissions, you could just open the file and read a few bytes, and that would update the A time. And if you have write permissions, you could write to the file and that would update the M time. Either way, making those changes also update the C time since now something about the file has changed. But the touch command also allows you to set these timestamps to any date, not just the current time. Let's try to set those times to the epoch. But that fails, even though we have write permissions. That also should make sense. We have write permissions to the file, but we are not the owner. So modifying those timestamps to arbitrary dates seems reasonable to restrict to the owner. If we are the owner, we can set those timestamps. Note that in this case the birth time was changed as well. Whenever the M time is modified to a date that's before the current birth time, the birth time is updated to match, to avoid as appearing to require time travel to modify a file before it is created. Also note that the C time was updated when we set the other times. There is no option for us to set the C time. Think about it. Changing the times in the change of the file status information, and the C time tracks whenever the file status information changed. So if you could update the C time to an arbitrary date, it would immediately have to be set to the current time to reflect that change in the file status. 
We can also touch to selectively update one or the other times, A time or M time, and each time the C time will be updated as promised. Once for A time, and once for the M time. Ok, so we saw how the M time was updated when we appended data to the file, which included the change to the ST size field. But what if we don't append data and merely change some data in place? Here we use our good friend Ed to flip a single byte, and the various time fields are updated, all three of them. This is because to make the change, we had to first read the file, which updated the A time, make the change, then write the file, which updates the M time, and so all three times have been changed. Here, let's read the file again, and this time keep a close eye on the C time. Reading the file changes the A time, as we observed, while the C time did not change. But wait, the C time should be updated whenever anything about the file changes, so a change to the A time should trigger an update of the C time, shouldn't it? After all, that's exactly what we saw when we called touch. Well, it turns out that C time and A time are a little bit trickier than that. A mere update of the A time as a side effect of any of the file operations, such as a read, does not update the C time. An intentional modification of the A time by way of e.g. touch, however, does. POSIX has in all system calls a note about which of the time fields it should update, if any. By the way, we just used the add line editor to edit the file in place. This wasn't done to impress the Unix young'uns. Well, not only anyway. One might think to use the set command with the dash i flag to edit a file in place. Here, and it looked like that. Now, what's that? All times are the same now, even the birth time. That suggests... That's right. This file is a different file now. Set i does not actually edit a file in place. It creates a temporary file, then replaces the current file with a temporary file. Depending on the version of set, that may include creating a new file or truncating the old file. Anyway, so let's think a bit more about the A time. Any read on any file would trigger an update of the A time, which the file system then has to write to disk. That means that you constantly are triggering comparatively expensive I.O. This not only impacts overall I.O. performance, but especially on solid-state drives, this can actually reduce the lifespan of the drive. So let's find a way to avoid this. Many file systems support a mount option to disable A-time updates altogether. No A-time. Let's try this out with our separate disk. Here we see a file with the various times as displayed. Reading the file here will not update the A time. Even trying to explicitly update the A time via the touch command does not update the A time. No A time means no A time. But the touch command, even though it did not actually change the A time, did not fail, and the C time update was done as if the A time had been changed. That is, the touch command is not aware of the file system's mount options or behavior. It issues a call to make the change, and that is all. So why don't we use no IE time everywhere? Well, sometimes it is useful to know when a file was last accessed, and some programs do in fact depend on that. For example, many mail programs use the comparison of the M time to the A time to determine whether or not there is a new mail in a given file. But there are other ways to solve the dilemma with the A time and its impact on performance. Let's take a look at the Linux system. Here we see the output of a stat command differ between the different Unix versions. As usual, compare the manual pages for the details. But we see that reading the file here does not update the A time. So perhaps this file system also has the no A time option enabled? Writing to the file, like we did before, updates the M time and C time here but not the A time, even though clearly we did read the file. But, and this is where it gets interesting, reading the file now does update the A time. 
This is a default behavior on most Linux systems these days. And the file system mount option is known as relTime, or relative A time. That is, the A time is only updated if the M time or C time is newer than the A time, or if the A time is older than 24 hours. This allows the file system to continue to support applications that depend on the A time change, but do not have to thrash the disk with I.O. and read only operations. Different versions of Unix and different file systems may or may not support this or other similar options. Okay, so having seen the touch command in action, we then might ask just how it manages to perform the actions, and the answer is provided by the uTime family of functions. As with other calls we've seen before, we get the familiar variations. LU times to operate on the symlink, FU times to operate on the file descriptor, and a uTime NS set variation. The second argument to U times is a two element array of time values, one for the A time and one for the M time. If you pass in null, then you get the current time, and for that, write permissions are sufficient, as we've seen. If you do pass a time value, the function sets the A time and M time accordingly, but requires ownership of the file in question. Either way, C time is set to the current time, as something was modified about the file. Finally, there are variations that allow for nanosecond precision, and the uTime end as at call supports those via the time spec instead of the time val argument. Alright, time for an intermission. Let's recap. The A time is a bit odd. It describes the time of last data access. But its logic seems to have a number of negative side effects, so that we have found ways to work around that via mount options and different implementations. The M time makes a bit more sense. Whenever we write to the file, it gets updated. The C time indicates when anything about the file has changed, and it's the only field we can't influence. The different system calls will trigger an update automatically. Calling U times to set the timestamp requires file ownership, and with all that we've covered here, you can now implement the touch command, or at least take a look at the sources from the NetBSD operating system. Oh, and by the way, bananas really are berries, botanically speaking. Anyway, that's it. We're out of time for today. But we're not done with time by far. More on this big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff in our next video. Until then, thanks for watching. Cheers!